Good Monday morning, everybody. It is July 16th, and welcome to another episode of Ronnie's Car Talk. Auto Search USA, new cars, used cars, sales and leasing. I'm the owner of this company, your search for the perfect car always starts here. So, this week, we are going to talk to you and update you on exactly what happened uh, last week. Remember, if you didn't watch last week's video, we were gone camping over the 4th of July, and <clears throat> we broke down on the way back. So I had to take my vehicle to a transmission shop, get that all ready to go, and it, it's, it took like a week to get it done. Um, so what happened was last Friday, I jumped in a car and drove five hours to Montrose. It was horrible going out there just to pick up my car. I took a driver with me, so you know we, we, we made the best of it. It was a good time, I guess. A good day to do it. It wasn't raining, and it wasn't all smoky from the fires. Um, we get there, and the vehicle is really quiet when I test drove it, so there was no gears grinding, no problematic symptoms, anything of that nature. Now, mind you, I'm in Montrose. I'm dealing with mechanics I typically don't deal with. I don't have any way to follow up with these people. Um, all I can do is take their word and uh, test drive the vehicle myself. I was a mechanic a long time ago, but doing transmission work was not my specialty, so I was just hoping for the best. So what happened was once we hooked up the camper and started to pull it back, about 45 minutes into the drive, I started getting a crazy amount of noise again, a whining noise whenever I pressed the gas pedal. So basically, it sounded like the vehicle was going to break down and I was going to have to start this process all over again, which was terrible. Mind you, you know, we're leaving Montrose, which is about 9,000 feet. I had to drive up Monarch Pass, which if you're not from Colorado, I see you guys tuning in like Ornette Moore down in Virginia. Um, Monarch Pass is like 11,500 feet. It's about right at what they call treeline. And also, if you're from Virginia, treeline is where the trees stop growing. So if you ever see pictures of Colorado, the next time you'd see uh, pictures of the mountains, look closely at the mountains and you'll see a line that goes across horizontally, which basically shows you exactly where the trees stop growing. And they stop growing at about 11,500 feet. So anyhow, to continue with the story, I didn't have many options at that point. So I just decided, you know what? I can't do more damage to it by continuing to drive it. It's got no check engine light on. It's just making a noise. I'm going to try and get this vehicle back to Colorado Springs where I can get with my mechanics and get the proper work done to the vehicle that it needs. So, you know, fast forward, I made that drive. We made it. <laughs> the vehicle didn't break down. It wasn't leaking. Uh, but it still has to go back to the shop this week for what I believe is a transfer case. So um, transfer case basically sends the power from uh, the front drive shaft to the back drive shaft. And also when you put it into four wheel drive, it takes an in and out of four wheel drive. So if you didn't know what that was, that's what I've been dealing with. Um, now, let's talk about this a little bit more in depth because, mind you, I've been sharing with you guys my breakdown problems and what happened to me. And, you know, being a, in the business for 25 years and having access to different cars uh, on demand, I've got access to auctions, I've got access to cars that I can get all the time. I had planned for this type of, of a disaster, if you want to call it. So I've already mapped out the next five years of what's going to happen if I need another vehicle. So when that Suburban broke, uh, my wife, my father-in-law, they automatically start talking about, well, let's get a diesel truck. And I thought, you know what, maybe we should get a diesel truck, but I'm only using this vehicle, I'd say 10 times a year. So less than once a month, I'm, I'm driving this actual vehicle. So instead of, instead of spending 40000 right now, I can spend a couple of thousand dollars and make this vehicle roadworthy and safe and it doesn't have to be put on credit. I can pay cash for it because I had an emergency plan. I had a plan for this so that we could take care of it. And when I'm talking, bringing it all back together, I'm talking about planning your vehicles. Would you have that type of a plan? If your vehicle did not work tomorrow, how much money have you set aside uh, to plan for your next vehicle? And you may have the answer to that question. You may say, yeah, I've got $15,000 or whatever the case may be. Well, what I'm telling you also is that you can call us, leave questions in the comments box. You can set up a, an appointment for me to look at your car. You need to know the value of your vehicle. You need to know exactly where you're sitting. If you're driving a 2001 Suburban like my old Suburban that I used for camping, 
what does a new Suburban cost? If your car completely died and you needed to have another Suburban, do you know it's going to take at least $40,000 to get a nice used one? Brand new ones, they cost $55,000, $60,000 depending on how you like it equipped. But um, those are the answers I'm trying to teach people. Like you can't just continue to walk around in your vehicles like they're going to last forever. You can't just jump in that car, take your kids to school, like it's just going to be this way forever and I'm not going to have a problem because that problem is going to happen at the least opportune time. So um, what we're going to start today as well is I really want you guys to leave some questions in the comics box. So when I get the right questions and, 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 and they're interesting stories that I have to tell about the questions, then we'll come back later and do some more live episodes and answer those questions. And we'll make sure to include your name in them. Um, so please share this video, put some comments in the box about your questions and we'll get those all, uh, we'll look at all of them and we'll, you know, if they're really good, we'll come back and give you the answers. Um, one other thing I'd like to talk to you about is, you know, since we're talking today about what I'm actually doing, honest advice is, is tough to get. I like to work with mechanics. I, I, I'm really loyal. So when I get mechanics, I like, I stick with them for a long time. Um, but who do you call for car advice? You know, do you trust that if you're thinking about buying a Honda, you can just go to the Honda dealership and figure out that's exactly what's going to work for you? You know, like you're meeting this person for the first time and they're advising you that you should buy their product is how have you thought that through? You know, so what I provide is honest advice, whether you buy a car from me or not. And I'll say that again, honest advice, whether you buy a car from me or not, it's always free. So basically, if you have a question about your situation and you're thinking, I'm thinking I want to buy a Honda, you can give me a call and ask me exactly what I think about your particular situation. Um, my only caveat to that is that you are prepared for the answers. I, am, I don't look at these things with any emotion at all. I've been doing this for 25 years. And so my answers are real. They're basically designed to solve a problem, not make you in love with the car. You understand? Cars always cost you money. Relationships always cost you money. And if you're in love with that particular car, it's probably cost you more money than you need to spend. <laughs> so basically, um, finding the right advice is, is more important than just being in love with the car you're going to purchase because you can find a vehicle that you really love that ends up costing you a lot of money down the line that you didn't prepare for and you didn't have any idea that that was going to happen just because you fell in love with that car. So please do share this video. Post some more comments and questions because I'd like to come up with some new content for you guys. And so um, as we continue to move through life, let's think about that. And your questions are always, I'm grateful for your questions, guys. I hope you have a great day. Make it a great week. Thank you.